Welcome to Queen's College Physics Department's Distance Lab for the Magnetic Force. We're going to be studying the force experienced by a charge as it moves through a magnetic field, the Lorenz force. So let's look at the equipment. We have a current balance, a simple device that allows us to hold a wire. Our wire is going to be a trace on a uh, circuit board which can be attached here. This is one of the variables we can change because we have a whole series of these of different lengths. We can control the current flowing through here from the power supply. Increase the current in a single wire or in keep the current the same for different lengths of wire. We're going to measure the current using a current meter. The current here is a simple series circuit. Power comes from here to the current meter, through the wire, to the meter, back to the power supply. We're going to be generating a magnetic field using magnets. You can see that there are six individual magnets here. They're aligned with red on one side and white on the other side, They're vaguely horseshoe in shape. Uh, I'm not going to take one out and show you because they're a pain to get back in here. And that's something you can comment on in your lab. Why do magnets not like to be aligned in this manner? The white and red bars on top are some ferrous uh, material, probably iron, and they're designed to smooth out the magnetic field from these magnets. We have a slot here which we can put our wire between and have a more or less magne uh, uniform magnetic field across the wire perpendicular to the current. That's important. Read your lab. An interesting question you can uh, ask in your lab is considering your experience last week on magnetic field, just how uniform do you think that field is going to be. We have no way of knowing. We can't measure this. That's why we're going to be always calculating the magnetic force. So I put this here, slide it over here, make sure that the wire is centered between the poles of the magnet. And now the question comes up is how are we measuring uh, the force generated by this setup? Well, we have a scale, it's reading mass. Uh, it's currently reading all of the mass of the yoke and the magnets, and we don't care. So let's remove that from the equation there. Now, when I run a current through here, if there is a force generated by that current in that magnetic field, by Newton's third law, you're going to read it here as a mass, as a mass not a weight, you have to calculate the force. Not only do you have to calculate the force, you have to be sure about your units, because if you want your magnetic field in Tesla, this can't be in grams. And that's it. We're ready to go. So I'm going to turn on my power supply. And there you have your first reading. I'll give you a second to do it, and then I'm going to increase it. And there you have your second reading. And there's your third reading. Here comes your fourth reading. And five. and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. Off. There, that's the first procedure. You can now 
take that data and follow the analysis laid out for you in the online man manual. The second procedure is varying the magnetic field by varying the magnets. You know, there is a problem here. Uh, we're supposed to be keeping the current um, uniform here, fixed. But because this is not a constant current supply, all I can do is jiggle the voltage until I get a current I want. It won't be exact. And that's something that you should bring up in your lab. Uh, just how big an effect does that small variation in current have on the results of this procedure? Uh, you can look at, do a calculation to see whether it's negligible or, uh, or and uh, you can look at the final results to see if it's made a big difference. So here I'm going to I want to reduce the current, save my wire, and I'm going to turn it on. And there you go. For that current, actually, you know what? Stop. Let's turn that off. Aha, see? always tear every time you run this thing. There, zero. Now I turn the current on. And you have your first reading. Now I'm going to turn the current off. I'm going to pull the magnet. I'm going to slip one of the magnets out. I know it says two in the manual, but you know what? I'm going to do one at a time. I slip this on here, make sure it's centered, tear it again, and turn on the current, and there you have it. There, shut it down, pull the oak. Pull out yet another magnet, center it, there we go, tear this, turn on the current again. off, pull this, pull the magnet, center it, slip it on there again, tear, turn on the magnet, the power, Give you a second to take a reading. Turn it off. Pull this. Go down to two magnets. Center it. Tear. Turn on the current. And off. And I'm stopping there. I'm not going down below two magnets because if you had concerned about the uniformity of that field when there were six magnets in there, if I go down to one magnet, it's going to be silly. So now I have to put those magnets back. Okay, now we're ready for procedure three. In this one, we're going to vary the length of the wire. That means changing out these circuit boards for the same constant uh, magnetic field with the six magnets restored. 
and I'm going to keep the current also constant. Unfortunately, that's not so easy to do. Again, something you can comment on in your lab. Uh, we're ready for the first one. Tear. And turn on the current. So I'm going to try and keep it close to 700 milliamps. You should be taking a reading. And off. Now I'm going to go to SF41. Tear it. On. 722. I'm going to leave it there. Take your reading. And off. And now next is going to be... I don't know. Numbers don't make sense. We're doing it just by eye. You can match the numbers up in the uh, lab manual. This is SF38. Ready to go. No, we're not. Now we're ready to go. On. 761. I'll try and bring it down a little bit. There you go. And off. Next one is SF39. Tear it. Tear it again. And turn the current on. Turn that current down a little bit. There you go. And off. Next is SF37. Tear it. Turn the current on. I'm going to leave it there. Take your reading. Off. And finally, the very shortest one, which is SF40 for some reason. Tear it. Press the right button. Tear it. Turn it on. Best I can do. Take your reading. Uh, wait or wait. Hold on a second. Off, tear, try that one again, on, there you go, take your reading, and off, and we're done, that's the three procedures. Um, you should be able to complete the lab with that data. You saw the trouble I had with that last one and um, my questions about the magnetic field procedure where I was changing the magnets. Those are all things you can comment on there. And uh, I guess we're done.